Welcome to this tutorial on the Global Livestock Environmental Assessment Model Interactive or GLIMI. I'm Robin Martinez from the GLIM team here at FAO and today I will demonstrate how to use the tool. GLIMI is the first public and user-friendly simulation tool for estimating livestock production and assessment intervention scenarios in the livestock sector. The tool, which is contained in this Excel file that we are seeing, it's organized around three different modules which reproduce the main stages of livestock production. That is the herd, the herd module, feed module, and manure module, which can be seen in the top navigation bar. The model is supposed to run at national level, so for demonstration purposes, we will go with uh, United States. We have to select the region, and the, within the region, we select a particular country. This will automatically upload default values that are in the database of GLIM in case that the user don't know the data or has no uh, all the data available. Once we select the country, as we said, we click on the start simulation and it brings us to the herd module, the first uh, page of the herd module, in this case, the cattle. At the top, we can see the different species covered by GLIM, six, uh, six species in total, four ruminants, cattle, buffalo, sheep, goats, and two monogastric species, pigs, and chicken. All the, mo all the pages of the herd module follow the same similar structure with three, main with three main areas. The first one at the top contains a little bit of explanation on how to use the particular page and some definitions if necessary. Second part, which is this box one, contains the total animal numbers and also adult reproductive uh, animals. And the third part also uh, in the box two contains all the herd parameters that are necessary to simulate the herd dynamics and the structure. Another common aspect uh, that goes throughout the entire model is the color code of the cells. In this case, here we can see light blue cells, gray cells, and white cells. The first ones being the default uh, standard parameters from our database which can range from animal numbers to herd parameters to feed ratio uh, percentages, as we will see later on. Those cannot be changed and are meant to be a reference point for the user. The second case, gray cells are automatically updated with the calculations as the user changes or modifies some parameters. Finally, the white cells are meant for the user to change any parameters uh, they want. For instance, if we change uh, the original number to uh, higher population, we immediately have seen the, the change in the total animal numbers. The second box, as we said, it's in this case all the necessary parameters to simulate the functioning of the herd, ranging from age at first calving, fertility, mortalities, replacement rate, and some productivity numbers that can be easily used to run different scenarios or uh, just uh, as, a, as a national inventory tool. Any change that we want to make in these her parameters will, will be reflected in the results pages we'll see later on. Once we introduce any change uh, in, in that part, we can move on to the next module or the next species if we want to cover more than, more than one species. For today's uh, purpose, we will go directly to the feed module by clicking directly on the on the top navigation bar. Once we are in the feed module, we'll see that all ruminant species are divided into two different herds, the dairy herd and the beef or meat producing herd, since the ratio and the diet can be quite different. Again, the first part of the, of the page is uh, briefly a reminder of the instruction on how to use this particular module. Second box it summarizes the, the ratio into the main feed components. In this case, for ruminants, it's, it's roughages, grains, and agroindustrial byproducts as percentage of the total dry matter intake. If we, if we want to modify the ratio of particular feed materials, we can click in, in this button, modify the ratio, and the Excel takes us directly to the detail ratio. 
in this case for grassland based systems. For ruminant species, there are, we distinguish three feeding groups uh, as we can see here adult female, replacement adult animals, and finally fattening or surplus animals. In the list of uh, feed materials, we can find a definition which is uh, in, in this part of the of the, of the spreadsheet and again uh, default parameters and also user defined ones if we would like to to modify the ratio we can only we can we can change it by clicking in any white cell and, and modifying the ratio bearing in mind that obviously it has to it has to be it has to add up to 100% we can go back to the summary ratio by easily clicking on the on the button and we see that there's some some component missing so we can increase this easily by adding for instance uh, grass and we we are now sure that all the ratio adds up to 100% the same process can be repeated for any of the species buffaloes sheep goats or for any of the monogastric species. Once the feed component is uh, inserted, we can move to the to the third and final step of the process, which is the manure part. And again, we'll go back to cattle, which is our main example here. A manure module, the function of the manure module is to simulate an the emissions related to the different manure management systems as defined in the IPCC guidelines which are shown in this second box here for each of the for each of the systems again we find a default value and the user input value which have to add up 100% so for instance to create a, a, a intervention scenario we could shift part of the of manure from dry lot to anaerobic digester so we can reduce here and increment accordingly uh, the 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 scenario uh, manure management system this will of course impact uh, immediately in the in the results once we are once uh, we are done changing all those parameters for both uh, dairy and beef systems, uh, either grassland-based or mixed uh, systems, we can finally check the results by clicking directly on the results button at the top navigation. The results page is organized into two different uh, sections: the summary section, which can which we are seeing right now and the detailed uh, results that are available by clicking into these buttons at the top bar. Summary results are pretty straightforward. Uh, we have different graphs representing animal production, in this case meat, milk and eggs. Total emissions uh, as a total aggregated number emissions by species and source and the total share of each of the main greenhouse gas. The next result that we have is a, a, a more disaggregated breakdown of different source of emissions. A brief comparison between the simulation of GLIMI which uses tier 2 methodologies with uh, versus tier 1 methodology from IPCC for, uh, for some of the sources. And finally, we can compare the emission intensity of different livestock products uh, across uh, the, the, the uh, comparing the simulation against the regional results in terms of kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of protein. If we want to retrieve the more detailed results, we can we can go directly here into cattle and what the model provides us is the complete breakdown of all the sources, uh, production and total uh, emissions for both dairy and beef herd uh, and, and all the production systems, in this case grassland systems here and mixed systems here. This is, uh, this is done for several species 
here we have cattle, but we can also go to buffalo, sheep, goats, pigs, or chicken. In the case that we are able to uh, activate uh, macros in our in our in our system, we can click in this button here, which automatically exports a copy of the results of all the detailed results and also the summary summary results. This enables the user to quickly simulate different intervention scenarios and compare both emissions and production. Those are the main functionalities of Glimai. I hope, I hope it was useful and we were looking forward to hear from you any feedback uh, or any comment. Thank you very much.